The time for Christmas was getting started for the next year. Christmas lights hang in the home of old Chris Kringle. He sits down in his favorite chair and begins to listen to the joyous songs that have brought him joy so much over the many years he has lived in the North Pole. He eats some of the delicious foods that his wife, Miss Claus, has fixed for him. The children leave me such great offerings of milk, cookies, and the occasional other treats just to make me happy. There are such great kids out there in the world, he says as he stretches. He leans back in his favorite chair and begins to nod off. His eyes droop behind the little round glasses as music changes from a festive song to a somber song. The song, I'll Be Home for Christmas, one of Santa and Mrs. Claus's favorite Bing Crosby songs, finishes playing and the song Carol of the Bells begins, which is one of Santa's favorites. At this time, Santa finally falls asleep. He drifts into a deep sleep where he feels like he is falling down through the sky. He slowly falls past his sleigh, which is being pulled by his reindeer, but falls right past it. He looks up at the sleigh, still as relaxed as ever, and notices the sleigh is missing all of the reindeer. Curious, he thought, as he continued falling. He began to flip to where above his head was a dark blue ocean with a rippled reflection of the clear, starry sky in it. The sleigh wasn't coming back like it usually does in his dreams when he finishes his deliveries, which left Santa worrying about falling into the ocean. Splash! The ocean felt cold and looked dark. He looked around to find no North Star, Santa's favorite star and best way to find his way home. As a matter of fact, there was no sky that he could see. He felt like he couldn't breathe and noticed dark figures in the water. Children's hands, he said out loud, with bubbles pouring out of his mouth. He felt himself getting dragged down under the now icy water with no way to tell what to do. Help, he screamed out loud as he fell to the brick floor, knocking over every bit of leftover food that was on his table. He looked up at the star on his Christmas tree that was growing in his house. There's my star, and he chuckled as he tried to make himself better. After Miss Claus and about two dozen elves came in to check on him, he began to feel better about his dream. He noticed that the song playing now was, Do You Hear What I Hear? Another classic from Bing Crosby. The footsteps from everyone were fading as he sat there in his chair. After the footsteps fell silent, the fake crackling from the fire was all that remained. Huh? said Santa. Do you hear what I hear? He repeated the lyrics with the music no longer playing. I guess the elves must have taken a break, he said as he sat there in silence. The silence was strange, so he decided to go to bed with the missus and just cuddle up until he fell to sleep. Later that night, as he lay in bed next to Miss Claus, maybe you should take a little break this year before Christmas, Miss Claus said. You haven't really had a break since your days as St. Nick in the 3rd century. Everyone deserves some time off, and you more than earned it. I can't do that, Santa said. I couldn't stand myself if I left all those children with no Christmas. As long as there are children in the world, I will be there for them. Okay, dear, but try to relieve your pay love some. And don't forget the elves, too. I'll do something about it this year. I promise. The next day. Santa listens to the Magic Wish radio and tries to figure out what everyone wants for Christmas this year. After some time passes by, 
He sits back in his chair and scoffs. More smartphones? This has to stop this year. My elves are trying to keep up with all of the programs and keep them up to date the entire year until Christmas time. I have to do something for them before they fall over with exhaustion. Plus, our devices to talk to our mole elves where the humans live have to be updated and maintained. The midgets, dwarves, elves, or whatever the politically correct government wants to call them. I can still call my elves, or wee ones, he says as he gets up from his chair and heads to his planning room. After many hours of planning, thinking, and researching, he came up with an extraordinary idea on how to put the toys and Christmas cheer back into Christmas. I'll make some toys that self-update based on the children. That way, my elves can take a break. I can take a break, and the children can still be as happy as possible. I'll get my head programmer on this idea while the toys can begin their preparation for some new computer chips. Santa said with glee with his famous ho ho ho. Time flows differently here in the magical world of the North Pole. It moves slower than in the rest of the world. Several months, our time, passes by with no luck. Finally, a breakthrough hits, and everything falls into place. The new chips are compatible with the new programs for the toys. The new toys are built in perfect specs with the new chips. And the elves found a new way of relaxing with their new perfect little friends. Instead of having a group of elven programmers keep up all of the toys, now they just let the toys think for themselves. The toys can learn from the children. They can link up together to maximize what they learn. And have a little bed that comes with them so they can recharge their batteries. Of course, not every child would want it all. So other toys have been made with similar ideas. Self-learning, Wi-Fi connection, and a base to recharge at. With all the bells and whistles of smartphones, the months roll by, and Christmas is now here again. Santa packs up his sleigh with all of the new toys. He takes flight and waves a fare thee well to all of his diligent workers and family. As he flies from town to town and city to city, he thinks back on how well all of the toys performed and tested. Some of the toys even made friends with the elves. And they even helped out around the workshop. The toys, sitting in his sleigh, wanted nothing more in the world than to help Santa on this day. He was wearing a similar outfit to what Santa was wearing, but instead of a red cap, he wanted a top hat. He saw one of the elves having a party, wearing a top hat, and wanted to enjoy the same kind of fun. Wearing the exact same hat that Piotr, the elf, was wearing. After all of the toys were delivered around, Top Hat the toy, also known to Santa as Thoto, Santa and all of the reindeer flew home to be with Miss Claus and everyone else to celebrate their Christmas with some eggnog, games, and the elf ball. After the North Pole's festivities and some much needed rest, Santa sent messages to all of his elven wee one moles to see how the children were enjoying their new toys. It was a bigger hit than the phones and tablets that everyone loved so much. They could let children visit the net, chat with friends, and even get help with homework. This couldn't have been more perfect, even if it were planned, thought Santa. February came around, and children were given valentines to their sweethearts, toys hoped with this. March came and Santa was still thrilled that the new toys were doing so well. March the 21st came and Santa finally received a letter from one of his moles from America. The toys have begun attacking in 
and killing people, and the children were the first to be attacked. These toys have been causing chaos for a few days now, but we couldn't stop them. Thousands are either injured or dead. We need to help everyone around the world to stop the perfect little friends, dolls, before it's too late. Signed, your friend for life, Akasha the Elf. Santa rallies up as many of his helpers so he could and prepared himself to fly. Christmas without the kids is not Christmas, nor is it life. So help the children first, Santa shouted to everyone. Prepare the kill codes for the toys. We will not stop until everyone is safe. Piotr says, what about our forever promise to keep ourselves unknown to the world? Piotr looks up over toward the workshop. What about the gifts given to you by Shangri-La, Nicholas Fumil, and all of the others who have perfected your immortality? Your promise to them to keep out of sight. None of that will mean anything if the world is destroyed, Santa barks at Piotr. They all take off and fly into the icy winds of the night sky towards America. 100 years later. It's the day after Christmas and Santa sits in his favorite chair. The fire crackling in the fireplace, the food sitting in front of Santa, all of the usual things that you usually see in Santa's home on the day after Christmas. The food hasn't been touched nor has Santa enjoyed a good meal since that day 100 years ago. Miss Claus walks in and begins to speak to Santa. You know it wasn't your fault. Plus, it was 100 years ago that this happened. And, as you know, you can't change the past. Miss Claus turns away and begins to walk out of the room. But before she did, she stopped and said, At least eat something. For me. She continues to stand there, waiting for a response from Santa. She lets out a sigh while tilting her head down toward the ground. Try and remember all of the good times that you've had with the children. You know they have forgiven you, don't you? Santa slowly turns his head in the general direction of Miss Claus and begins to slowly speak. There's no such thing as children. 